It's the busiest shopping street in Europe and one of the busiest times of year. But what's supposed to be a pleasant experience can quickly turn into a nightmare. One in five people have a disability, but some of Oxford Street's biggest stores still aren't accessible. Inside the flagship top shop, I have to face tills that are too high, clothes I can't reach, and changing rooms that are completely unusable. You can't even call for assistance if you're in a wheelchair. But being inclusive goes beyond doing the right thing. It makes financial sense. With the annual spending power of the disabled community estimated at £249 billion a year. Today is Purple Tuesday, the UK's first ever accessible shopping day, where stores promise to focus on the needs of disabled consumers. Mike Adams came up with the idea after a terrible experience last year. Last Christmas, I went Christmas shopping and we went into a shopping centre and a non-scientific experiment, but we went into 27 shops, me and my partner, and in 23 of them, the shop assistant never came over um, and never spoke to me. And if they did come over, they only spoke to my partner. And actually, we said, this was about good customer service and that wasn't happening. One of the stores who signed up to Purple Tuesday is Marks and Spencer. Hi, nice to meet you. Yeah, I'm very well, thank you. We've been working to support customers with disability for some time, but what Purple Tuesday does is it gives us an opportunity to do even more. Um, so today uh, we have launched a new team brief um, and refreshed our staff training for um, accessibility and disability. So you told me that your staff get training on inclusion, which is fantastic, but are the trainers actually disabled themselves? The training that's in our store is delivered in store by our store colleagues. Uh, it's done as scenario based, so um, they uh, um, are given different scenarios to then work through to understand how they would support um, our customers uh, with varying accessibility needs. But many disabled people feel steps like this are just a token gesture. The Equality Act should mean equal access for us in all areas of life. So why do I still come face to face with shops that I can't even enter? Should the government be doing more? Would you actually say that the Reasonable Adjustments Act under the Equality Act is fit for purpose? Well, I think, you know, clearly there's more to do. I mean, listening to you, I listen to lots of people with disabilities. I actually spent a, one, a month myself in a wheelchair when I broke my hip and I just saw firsthand how it is such a struggle when it really shouldn't be a struggle. So, of course, the government's always looking to see what more we can do. My concern is that real action seems slow and with only 500 shops signed up to Purple Tuesday, should we be demanding more? And as you can see, Sam is with me now. Um, Topshop, mm -hmm. you were there today in the flagship store. You experienced what the viewers have just seen. Yeah. Topshop has issued us with a statement this evening. Um, in the store Samantha visited, we have two fully accessible changing rooms. However, on this occasion, Samantha was directed incorrectly as well as rebriefing our staff on providing the best service for all customers. We will be in contact with Samantha to apologise for the service she experienced and to learn more about her visit in order to make positive changes going forward. Sam, what do you make of that? I mean, I think it's great that they've responded and they've recognised that my experience was, you know, less than perfect. But I think it really highlights that, you know, you can have all the, um, you know, accessible toilets, you know, lower, lower tills and, and, you know, accessible um, changing rooms in the world. But if your staff aren't educated on, on you know, directing um, disabled con consumers to, mm. to where these amenities are, then it's a little bit fruitless. Yeah, and I suppose some stores are... Um really big, purpose-built, and can make these physical adaptions. Mm. Uh, but lots of London stores are small and old. If they can't fix that, just because it's impossible, they can fix the staff training, can't they? Of course they can. You know, I'm not unreasonable. I know that if, you know, putting in so many, you know, ramps and things are going to be um, financially, you know, kind of too much for small retailers, it costs nothing to educate your staff to go up to someone like myself and go, do you know what, good morning, is there anything that maybe I can help you with? I got a sense from watching your report, and this was a report for us, it was for mm -hmm. Purple Tuesday to highlight these issues and encourage all store owners and shop owners to do more. Mm -hmm. 
it was just exhausting. Yeah. Everything you tried to do was a battle. It is, unfortunately, it really is. I mean, everything, every time I leave my home, it's it's a risk assessment. And, you know, sometimes I thought I won't even bother. And I know that a lot of people in the disabled community do exactly that and they become very isolated because, you know, even just taking public transport, you know, taking a taxi to, the, to a shopping centre can be very, very draining and stressful. And that's not, you know, any way to live, for, for, well, for anybody, really. And what do you do? I uh, saw you uh, going to, trying to go into several shops with steps, I presume. You just you just have to bail on, the, on just, those yeah, jobs. I there's no way around it. You know, I sometimes take someone with me, but I don't always want to do that. I want to be as independent as possible. And as you say, it's affecting their bottom line as well because yes. they're missing out on your custom and the are. custom of lots of other people with disabilities. Sam Rank, thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you.